friends. Uh, today we have Carlton Daniel, who is one of our Applied AA course student from 2019 onwards. So Carlton, thank you very much for taking the time to share your learning journey. You have a very interesting journey with multiple career transitions over the last year and a half or so. So thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you, sir. So I'll give a brief introduction and then we'll focus on your interview experiences and your whole overall learning journey itself. Yes. Cool. So Carlton is uh, joining as an ML engineer at Vipro soon. And uh, since he has been our student from 2019, he has also made multiple career transitions. So uh, for the last seven, eight months, he has been working as an ML engineer, uh, sorry, as a senior software engineer in NLP at Quest Global, where he worked on building chatbots for about five months. And prior to that, he worked as an ML engineer at Dimag AI for about seven, eight months. And earlier to that, he worked as a software engineer for about a couple of years at Accenture. And he graduated with a bachelor's degree in computer science in 2017. So from, from a software engineer at Accenture, you've made multiple short transitions, primarily building your core expertise in NLP. And now uh, you're joining Wipro as an ML engineer. So am I right? Yes, sir. Cool, cool, perfect. So Carlton, with that background, I just wanted to understand what were your interviews like at Wipro? What were each of the rounds? If you can go into more details. Again, given that you had close to like a year to just over a year experience in NLP, uh, right? So what were the yes, interviews sir. like? Uh, so initially, the first round was a coding round uh, where uh, they had given us uh, some Python questions where like a sequence, some sequence that they wanted, two, three questions were related to uh, writing scripts. So uh, it was, they mainly didn't focus on the syntax. It was like, how do you come to a solution? Uh, so there was a person on the other side who was uh, checking whether the logic that you're writing is uh, making sense or what. So after that, there was a... No, in this so if I may interrupt. So in this right. uh, Python round, right, what are the hardness of questions like? Was this simple data pre-processing or string manipulation? What types of questions were there and how hard were they compared to some of the assignments you have done in the course? Uh, so uh, the assignments helped me a lot, uh, actually. So uh, my jobs that I've transitioned, actually, from learning from scratch, my I learned from scratch in the from the course only. Uh, so whatever experience that I got, because uh, I have applied a lot uh, from the course uh, in the assignment as well as in the work, it was easy for me during the interview. So string manipulation questions, uh, uh, some uh, technical questions like if regular expressions if were given, and so these kind of questions they had asked. And at the end, they were testing matrix multiplication also. Since SGD assignment that we had. Uh, so that helped me a lot uh, to understand a lot of core concepts that SGT So this coding is. round was about string manipulation and some matrix algebra. Yes, yes. Got it, got it. Cool. So what was what the next round? Next round was the technical round. Uh, here, initially, they started with what experience I had prior to this. And it was uh, um, mostly on, uh, uh, from, they, from my experience, so they tried to build a case study. Like, how will I approach a problem? For example, he, uh, since... I have applied information retrieval task that was there in the live session that you had started using Elasticsearch and uh, the fashion uh, uh, data, the, the fashion data set also that you had taught information retrieval. So I had applied this in one of the startups. So he uh, framed a question uh, similar like if I give you a set of resumes and I have to, uh, this is the job description and I want to shortlist uh, uh, so many uh, similar resumes to the, uh, the job description. So how will you approach this problem? Uh, so in uh, one of the uh, previous companies, I had applied uh, uh, Spacey for NER and all this. Uh, so I initially learned it from the live session of chatbot that you had got. So uh, it helped me to you know explain this. So I would pick up uh, the technical skills that you had, like C, C++, Python, all these technical words. We can train a model to extract that. And then uh, we can vectorize this do document using different approaches and then to the uh, uh, to the given description, we can find the distance to all the other uh, resumes. So by this, you will get the closest uh, by similarity search, or we can apply a clustering method also to find uh, the nearest possible resumes. Uh, so this is what the answer. Very interestingly, I think they've tried to pose a problem which you can yes. solve given your background of experience and expertise, yes. but with yes. a slight twist, not yes. the same problem, but a slight modification on that. Yes, yes. Very nice. What yes. else was there in this round apart from uh, this time time world is, problem? Yes, another the case uh, case study based question only had asked. Since I had worked on uh, uh, predictive analysis, uh, 
so he had come up with the question uh, like uh, uh, there is a, a vehicle and you have uh, you do not have any sensor data available but you want to build a model that will predict the faults initially you do not have a data so how will you approach this problem so uh, so i initially since there is no data i told uh, based on domain experts uh, we can consult and get the uh, you know range of values threshold of values for the sensors and using since uh, decision trees also work on yeah. Uh, similar uh, similar uh, principles like difference conditions that can be uh, uh, you know used initial stages but it might not provide the perfect answer basically a simple rule engine based on domain yes. expertise yes then later stages we can use time series uh, like lstm models that can work uh, work well on time series uh, so this was my answer like good good so both questions were actually real world scenario based questions, questions. with some interesting constraints Yes, and uh, he uh, had asked the one question where, uh, based on optimization problem, like uh, uh, you had also mentioned this in the course at one point, uh, where uh, since uh, Python is interpreted, it it may not be very quick. So if you want to uh, run models less than like uh, at a you know very quick time, how will you optimize it in uh, uh, you know in uh, make it quick? So that was basically the, low latency uh, models. Yes, yes. So. Uh, uh, so, so if we are able to get the splits of the node like using graphs or something from decision trees we can implement that in c, c program so you had exactly. mentioned this in the course I because the i i remember doing something very similar in my previous company amazon where we right. took a model basically a random forest or a gpt model that was pre-trained took the actual decisions and implemented them in like c and to make it extremely fast so same solution Perfect, perfect. Very interesting. I like the scenarios here because they're not too simple, but there's a slight twist on them that only if you are clear about the foundations okay. and if you know the applied aspects, you can solve. Yes. Good, good. Very interesting. What about the next rounds after this? Uh, no, after this, it, uh, it was just a HR round and they sh sh shortlisted. Uh, okay, so it has been simple after that. So I think this was yes. the key machine learning role. Yes. Very good, very good. So what was your interview experiences like in general? Because you've been interviewing with multiple companies, also made multiple transitions. What do you think are the three most important things that you should focus on to crack interviews successfully? Uh, if possible, like you had mentioned in other videos as well, sir, that uh, if you are able to apply the concepts in the assignments somewhere into a small solution in, in your uh, working areas or uh, in somewhere, if you are able to apply that in your current work or somewhere, that can be showcased uh, as a, uh, 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 a very uh, you know highlighted factor uh, to the interviewer. I had applied uh, the Elasticsearch and the uh, the fashion uh, the Amazon fashion data the same thing as a proof of concept to demo to one of the customers, uh, Japanese customers. For they had to retrieve some. So was this uh, at uh, was this at uh, Quest Global? Yeah. Oh, and Dimag AI. AI. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Oh, you build a proof of concept for a Japanese customer. Okay, got it. Yes, sir. that helped. To, we got the project also by implementing that proof of concept. Very interesting. Very interesting. Cool. So, what was your learning journey been since 2019? Since you joined in the course, then again renewed because I think you mentioned yes, earlier that while your learning has been okayish and you got you had some success, successful career transitions, you wanted to continue learning, continue upskilling yourself. So, what yes, was sir. your journey been over the last? two or so years? Uh, initially, when I joined Accenture, since I'm a computer science student, it was more of a functional role. It didn't uh, suit me well. So I uh, immediately I took the course. And uh, as I was learning Python, I joined a company called Bungalow Technologies, which is a subsidiary of Drishti Labs. So they are uh, into uh, video analytics. So there, uh, since I knew basic Python scripting, they supported me uh, to write some automated tasks, build dashboards. Uh, I got a chance to work with GCP, some uh, Apache Airflow to trigger and monitor their uh, annotation workflows. So uh, here I got a some lot of Python work you learned, became more proficient yes. in Python there. Right. And then since then, I felt like I thought, uh, you know, uh, why not I become a ML engineer since I'm learning the course where I can apply, uh, uh, apply my, uh, you know, what I've learned. So that, that's when I got an offer from Dimag AI. So where I got uh, as a full-time ML uh, role in Dimag uh, AI. 
so uh, there i was uh, working uh, side by side i was uh, i started uh, uh, doing my master as well. i yes. worked for 7 8 months i did my master i uh, started doing my masters at vit vello and uh, sometimes whenever i get time i would do internship with them it's uh, some small small work that i could do i would uh, take care of take up and i would uh, do some paid internships with them Uh, then uh, side by side. Uh, then later, uh, only my thesis portion was remaining in my masters. So one year is completely studies, and remaining almost one year is only uh, thesis related. Work. So while you are so pursuing I, your masters at VIT, you are also working at this company, yes. right? Okay. Uh, at Quest Global, I uh, joined uh, after. Uh, while I'm pursuing my thesis work, I joined. Uh, you joined Quest, Quest Global. Global. Got, got Quest got Global. It. Yes. So there, I got to work with Rasa Chatbot. so they were, we had to demo a japanese uh, 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 japanese uh, uh, chatbot that uh, would do some some particular task like intent classification like in the live session that you have taught the same example like that money how do you take it from that mer so i remembered all this so when i was going through rasa it became simpler so yeah okay, so once like, you know the foundational concepts rasa is easy to that, play, uh, with. play with yes very good very good very nice so very very interesting journey so also i had this question on why did you like i think after you got your job at dimag ai right you continued with the course what was the reasoning yes. behind it uh, i have done i did only uh, seven, around 10 assignments but i was desperate to finish uh, the course i wanted to finish it uh, because i learned a lot with this only i was able to crack so i thought oh, let me learn a lot more whatever is there in the course so that i can uh, you know get uh, upskill myself uh, got it got it so what suggestions would you give to learners in our course who have similar backgrounds either who are let's say software engineers at accenture or similar companies and are trying to move into startups or larger companies for machine learning or nlp or computer vision roles so what suggestions will you give them in terms of how they should plan their learning uh, uh mine was a repeated watch some people uh, make notes of it and it makes things uh, simpler but mine is my thought, mine is visual learning only so uh, multiple times so, uh, i would just to be clear you did not make notes you watched it multiple times whenever multiple you needed yes so uh, yeah, it helped me a lot in my mtech also because i the, uh, since as a credit based system i chose all my subjects around machine learning only okay okay and uh, so all uh, we had problems on uh, manually we had to calculate decision trees uh logistic regression so all manual problem solving hypothesis testing so whatever we thought it didn't it didn't like it wasn't new to me when i was doing my masters oh so some of what you learned in applied ai was also helpful during your masters okay masters okay. yes so all these problems when students used to feel afraid to approach uh, if they are thought something like uh, like id3 card or different uh, different uh, 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 these models and problems it it would be new to them for me since i have watched all this it 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 was it made a lot more sense and uh, easier for me to apply it got it got it got it very interesting uh, cool carlton i mean very happy to see you make multiple transitions successfully get into roles that you are most passionate about most importantly build actual solutions to multiple yes. customers and clients across the world so uh, thank you very much for taking the time all the very best i'm sure this will help lot of students plan for their careers into nlp thank you very much carlton thank you sir